What's going on, my little corn dogs? Now, today, we're going to deviate a little bit from our usual goofy anime videos that we've been posting on Wednesdays and do something helpful for y'all. This video has been pretty highly requested, so why not get to it? We're going to talk about how to use Roll20 today, but specifically as a player. A DM video is going to come later on in the future about how to set up your campaign, set up your maps, and things like that. But for now, it's all about basically how to set up your account, how to use it, and different tools that you have to make your experience a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. Now, I've gone ahead and opened an incognito window, mainly for the purpose of it's not going to pull up my account, so you see exactly what you're going to see the first time you open Roll20. Now, I'm going to have it linked in the description so you can just click the link, or if maybe you're watching this and you're planning on doing this later in the day, you can honestly just Google Roll20, and it'll usually be the top thing that pops up, Roll20.net. You can go there, and then you're going to go ahead and create free account. And you're going to go through, just like any website that you've probably ever been to, create your account with your info. You'll probably have to, you know, make sure to confirm the email address and all that good stuff. But after that, you're honestly done with what is probably the hardest part. Now, once you're logged in, have the account, you'll have your homepage. This is actually mine here. Before we dive into this, though, I do want to talk about one thing in particular, and that is that Roll20 is not the only option you have available. There are plenty other ones. This is just the one that we happen to use. So if you've watched the campaign and you kind of like what you see and you feel like it's a great system or you feel like, hey, I just want to use exactly what I've seen be used so I kind of have an idea, then this is the route you're going to want to take. So this is going to be your basic homepage once you do create your account. Now, I do want to say that you're not going to have these upcoming games that you see here. These are because these are games that I have either created myself or been invited to to be a part of. And one thing I do want to mention, you'll see up here by your account, that you can manage your subscription. Because yes, there is a paid version of Roll20. Really, you don't need the paid version unless you plan on DMing and want to be very particular about what you do. Just note that as a player you really probably won't need to purchase it. Now, when it comes to actually getting into the game, this is honestly going to be up to your DM. And as I said prior, we're going to have a DM video coming shortly, but they're going to send you a link that you're going to click, and it's pretty much just going to auto put you into the game. It's actually super simple. So as a player joining a game, the process is not challenging at all and is, again, a matter of literally just clicking a link. Now, for those of you that like me, you're going to like your different customization options when it comes to profiles, just because I'm that kind of person. And when you do have your profile, you'll have your name up here. You can literally just click the name, super simple. And for the image, you change image right here. You can make this whatever you want. If you are in a single campaign and you're only planning on playing in that one, it is kind of helpful to change that picture to whatever your character is. However, if you're in multiple campaigns, I would recommend just going with a default profile picture. I have Runa from Kekigiri here because Kekigiri goes hard, as does Runa. As for your name, you can change it simply by clicking super easy, super simple. We love that. It'll have your achievements, your bio, enjoys playing, all that stuff. I haven't gone to the trouble of typing that out because I don't really look for public games. There is the feature to do that. I'm not going to talk about that today because this is more specifically geared towards Naruto 5e. But if you are someone that's going to want to look for some public games, it really does help a lot to have your bio, have your enjoys playing, have your actively seeking group for, because it just helps people know, oh, okay, this person's really into this, that, the other. Again, just helping your chances of getting picked into going into whatever campaign or thing you're looking for. Now, once you are in your games and you're ready to go and you're on your homepage and you're ready for your first session, all you're simply going to do is either click the Naruto 5e or just click launch game. Either way, you're going to be brought into it. Now, when you get brought into this, it's going to depend on your DM as to what you see. Couple things of note here. One, your bottom bar is not going to be filled with all of these buttons. Don't worry about that. We'll go over it later. But you will see these tools you have on the left, your chat stuff on the right, and then more than likely some kind of pre-set up first area that you're in for your campaign. Now, what I want to do first for you here is go over your basics of your character control. When doing this, it is literally a matter of dragging and dropping to whatever square you are on. You can rotate your character if you really want to at, you know, good old, good old torch than for those that watch the campaign. Besides that, you have your health and your chakra and then an extra bar that you can use for different things. It's easy to use it for his shield a lot. I would use it for my sage chakra, bunch of different options. One really cool feature that I actually didn't learn about until quite a bit into the first campaign that we played was that instead of doing the math in your head and let's say I take you know, 33 points of damage, instead of mathing it out, being like, oh, okay, 76 minus 33, 43, you can literally just type minus 33, and it does the math for you and auto drops it, which is really useful, especially when you're first starting off, because you're already worrying about so many different things. 
So now that you have character movement down, going one by one through the tools that you're going to have available to you, first off is going to be the pointer. It's very simple. This is going to be what you're on most of the time. It's going to allow you to hold right click and drag around your screen. You can click to interact with different things and move different people. And besides that, that's about it. You can also highlight if you're trying to move as a group, which can be helpful depending on the situation. Now, your next tool that you're going to see is going to be the brush. Now, the brush lets you do a lot of different things. For one, you can change your color to a lot of different stuff. If you know the exact code of the color you want, you can do that. And then it also lets you choose your size of brush, all those good things. The wonderful thing is you don't have to freehand all of your stuff. You do have options for things like rectangles, circles, stuff like that. The only thing I want to point out, especially in particular about circle, and this took me a second to get a hold of, not that it's complicated by any means, but it's just good to understand, is let's say I'm trying to cover this three by three right here with a circle. You don't start from the middle and drag out like some things do to kind of do the radius. You're going to want to start at the corner of the three by three and drag down to the other corner of the three by three. And just like that, you get a perfect circle to maybe do an area of effect, maybe mark some kind of jutsu that you used, whatever the case is. Next up is fairly simple. It's going to be your magnifying glass. Now this thing, honestly, I would recommend just using your scroll wheel. All right, you can do it piece by piece, but if you scroll up and down, you get the same effect with a little more control and you also have it over here. So kind of a silly tool to have over there, but hey, you know, who am I to say? Now the last tool that you're probably going to regularly use is going to be this ruler right here. It's really, really helpful because it helps you find ranges super quickly, right? Like from this square, Nariba's 15, Arata's 15, but Than is 20. So it lets you kind of figure out without trying to sit there and calculate out your squares to your closest potential. It just tells you if you're going in a straight line, that's exactly how far this thing is. It is also nice to note that whenever you're in this mode, you don't actually click and drag things. So you can click from anywhere to kind of make a point to some other spot. Another cool thing this has is maybe you're trying to round a corner, right? Maybe you're trying to start here and go around this corner so you can't make a straight line. You are able to go to this corner, right click, and then go off of that point adding from where you clicked. So it's really helpful because you can, if for whatever reason you're having to make weird pathing or something like that, you're able to make these very odd marks and measure them all out. The last thing I do want to point out is that you don't have to be on the measuring tool to do this. Let's say I wanted to measure Rada going from here down to this girl at this table right here. I can grab a Rada, and once I click right click, it's going to show me exactly how far I am. So then I can both drag and have a measuring tool at the same time. And again, the same principle applies where if I right click, it's going to mark a certain point and then to show me my measurement from there. Now, the last two things you see on here to skip this one for now, this is just the help section. If you forget something I talk about or you want to know some more shortcuts on the keyboard, this is where you're going to look for that. The other thing is this dice roller. Now, to be honest, I wouldn't even worry about this. I'm going to talk here in a little bit about a much easier way to go about this. But as you can see on the right side, if you just click, it's going to automatically roll 4d10s, 2d20s, 5d4s, 1d6. This is a way you can do that. But like I said, there's a way easier way to go about this to get it all in one spot. So instead of using that advanced dice roller, what I highly recommend is coming over to your chat bar, typing slash R and then whatever dice you want to roll. And this is what you've usually seen us typing into our own campaign. So let's say I wanted to roll a D20 plus a D6 plus a D4. Boom. It's going to roll them all, show me what I rolled and then add them all together for me. So it's a lot nicer because you're not clicking individual ones with over here and it auto adds it for you. So less math, which for most people is a good thing. Now, the other thing I want to point out with this rolling with typing feature is you can make it do a lot of cool things. So instead of just doing a D20 and a D6, you can do three D20s. You can do four D6s. You can also do dice that don't actually exist. So you can do a D2. You can do a D5. You can do a D164, right? Like whatever the probability or dice that you're trying to roll is, you can just throw it in there. Something you can also do is you can add straight numbers. So let's say that to advantage my role, I have a plus four on the check or whatever the heck that it is. You can just add that plus four. And then at the end, it's going to add that plus four to whatever the actual roles were. Now, I know this looks a little funky, but I'm trying to show something off here. And that's going to be your journal. Now, your journal, your DM is usually going to mess with to give you a few things. One, he's probably going to give you access to your characters in which you can drag them out and place them on the map where you need them. That's always fun and useful. The other thing is you can go into them and you can see their bio and info. And this is where you can start to change their health chakra and all that kind of stuff. Now, I would probably let your DM go in and save all the tokens and stuff because you don't want to screw something up and then he or she has to go in and mess it up later. So 
The only things I would really mess with if you're really wanting to is in your bio and info, you're going to edit. And this is where you can change your picture and your avatar and things like that. You can also change the character's name. So this is where I would do all of that stuff. But for the numbers, again, leave that to the DM because they're going to have a better understanding more than likely. And there might be specific reasons they want to set numbers to certain things. The last thing I want to talk about with y'all is going to be macros. And macros are these little purple buttons you see down here. And let me tell you, they are absolute lifesavers. So we've already talked about how to get into the journal right over here. You click your character, get into here. If you want your thing and your macro to be directly attached to the character, where anybody can click that character and then see them, you're going to do it this way through the journal. You're going to attributes and abilities and then add abilities to them. And as you can see, I have these checked as show in macro bar. I don't have attack because that one was outdated. Once you get it in there for initiative specifically, and this is going to be nice because it'll just speed up your games a little bit. Whenever you're writing it, do your usual slash R or slash roll plus whatever the roll is, and then add this little and sign open weird squiggly bracket tracker close squiggly bracket. The reason being when you do this, it's directly going to go into the actual initiative and turn tracker, which is really nice because then your DM doesn't have to ask everyone their numbers and it just gets thrown in there. So that's really helpful specifically for initiative. Now, if your DM is really awesome and they understand Roll20 in the DM sense a lot better than I do on the DM side of things, they're going to be able to help set up your macros to actually hit certain tokens. I'm not going to go into detail on that because that requires an understanding from a lot of people in the campaign, so we'll ignore that for now and just keep it simple. These are some other macros you can do, and this is the other way. Instead of the journal, you can go to your collection and just add macros where they're in your bar and your bar alone. Now, as you can see here, when I click them for a Rata attack, it's simply a d20 plus 8. And then as I click that, and I'll show you here, it will just roll that d20 plus 8 into the actual bar. So I didn't have to sit there and type everything out. I just clicked it. For sneak attack damage, I have it written to just type slash r d6 plus 48 plus 8. And then it rolls it all for me. So it really helps speed up the game and makes it a lot easier instead of going back to your character sheet and saying, oh, well, what is this? What is that? You just have it as a button. So, as for using Roll20 for Naruto 5e, that's about all you need to know. With other types of D&D and other types of role-playing games, there's actually character sheets built in, but the Naruto 5e one can't get inserted. They've actually talked to the Roll20 devs before, and for whatever reason, they just aren't putting that character sheet in. So, for now, this is about as good and as efficient as you can get. If you have any other questions, drop them down below in the comments, especially for this one. I'm sure there's going to be some extra ones, so I'm going to reply to what I can. And if you like the content, drop a little sub for your boy. All right, it's free. We like to make some Naruto 5e and anime content here. So if you're into that kind of thing, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.